I'm going to talk about the history of Mattermost. So, sort of our last five years. Uh, oops. Um, I just want to give this following disclaimer. Like, this timeline is not meant to be canon for the Mattermost. But it's just kind of like a general outline of where we are, where we came from. Um, so, we open sourced June uh, 2015. Um, this is actually us in Toronto. Um, so a little prehistory to this. We actually started in earnest in Mattermost, I want to say September or October of 2014. Uh, we actually, it didn't start as Mattermost, it started off as something slightly different. Um, it actually started off as a SaaS product as well. Um, around the holiday time, December time frame, we rewrote it. It was originally written in Python. Um, uh, we wrote it to rewrote it and go and react around that time. And then we ended up open sourcing it in June. This was really fun for me because I was actually up in Alaska and I was flying on an airplane when all this hit. So our, our the Hacker One news article went out. There was this huge blow up, and I get off the plane to like a, what felt like a bazillion messages and a bunch of crazy stuff. Going on. Uh, for those in the, you can see in the picture there's some of the OGsers there. There's some also some interns and some, some even the games people are there. So you know that kind of kicked off our meteoric rise in terms of things like GitHub stars. So it's something I love to track because I think it's a great vanity sim sim um, data symbol or whatever. We're at 18,000, uh, which is pretty amazing, um, especially when you consider us an application. Um, you know, that's really high on the app side. Lots of times GitHub stars are things infrastructure related, uh, but you can see our big spike and then our slow climb over the years. And it's always been, uh, it's always been something fun to go track and keep an eye on. I messed up was a function called text to JSS, which was finally removed in September 2015. It, uh, it, it, it did exactly what it said. It uh, took text, which is the Mattermost message, and converted it to JSX and tried to render it like that. It wasn't until September 2015 that we finally uh, replaced it with a proper markdown rendering pipeline. You can see the example there uh, of its output. Uh, that's actually the output from the shirt for people who uh, who have that shirt. And uh, hey, 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 I'm going to give Harrison the credit for vanquishing the beast. Uh, and we're all eternally grateful for him so much that we assign every markdown bug ever to him. I'm sure he appreciates that. Uh, so October 2015 rolls around. We finally get the GitLab um, OAuth provider stuff done. We end up shipping 1.0. That's the first version that ends up shipping with GitLab. And I think that's where a lot of our sort of traction took off from there. Um, our first customer came in November, 2015. I actually had to go dig through my emails to find this. Um, it was Stanford Research Institute. Um, and for those who aren't familiar, they're the inventors of things like the internet, the mouse, uh, Apple Siri. I think they paid via PayPal, or at least there was discussions around paying via PayPal. Um, I'm not sure how they actually ever ended up paying, but I know there was conversations around that. So what's really interesting about that, we charged our first customer before we even ever had a version to charge for. So the following several months later, March 2016, Enterprise Edition launches in 2.1. And I believe, once again, don't quote me on this, but I think Chris or someone looked, looked, looked it up. The only features we had that were enterprise was sign in with LDAP and sign in with Google Auth. So that's what we shipped in 2.1 as a paid for feature. Fast forward a few more months, we get to uh, May 2016 and we hired our first community member. So I think Elias started working on localized, the first pull request from Elias came in around January 2016. I still think it's probably the largest pull request ever submitted by community. Um, after working with Elias for several months um, on that pull request, we ended up uh, hiring him into the company in, in, um, in May of 2016. Okay, so uh, around the same time that we're hiring Elias, uh, our community helpfully informed us that security is a thing um, with some completely unsolicited uh, uh, vulnerability reports, starting with a few uh, cross-site scripting. Uh, th 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 this guy and other people at the time gave us a whole bunch of uh, fun security issues, but I've only put two here, which I thought were kind of fun and rather embarrassing, being that we didn't notice these. Um, so the first one is you could inject uh, JavaScript into the, the uh, themes. So you could, you know, sneak, 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 sneak your cross-site scripting uh, vulnerability into uh, a Mattermost theme, fun. 
And uh, yeah, you could totally just inject JavaScript right, right, right into post messages. Like, hey, why not, you know? Oh, it's a feature. This is, uh, th these pictures are from our Blue Mountain offsites. Um, and yes, we called them offsites at the time, even though we didn't have a site. We actually uh, came up with the leadership principles, um, or at least solidified them here. Um, and this is around the 2.0 to 3.0 time frame in which we flipped the table, by which I mean that we, uh, we, we made users a first class object because originally, uh, like Corey said, we had SaaS on our minds and we had sharding by teams and stuff. Um, and it, it was just a great moment where we, we, we all kind of sat down and, you know, the company direction had changed. We were like on-prem and everything. And uh, me, Corey, and Harrison, Joram, and whoever was sitting around there were like, yeah, our user model makes no sense. We should probably fix that. And uh, a couple, like probably the next month, uh, there's a huge, huge refactor PR to flip the table. What, what, one other thing I'd like to point out about this slide is that picture of the guy flying on the bike is in fact Ian. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll let you ask him if he stuck the landing. Yes, I think Ian holds the record for the most injuries at outings. So February 2017 rolls around. I think this is our first thing that we call an actual MatterCon. I don't know if we go back and rebrand the other ones, but this is our first one. We still fit in a hotel room at this time, so we're in a suite. Um, you can see the top right, that's most of us or whatever, sitting around working in, the, in a hotel room uh, in Las Vegas. Um, what was memorable about this trip for me was, I think Christopher was on his deathbed, um, sick or whatever, and while we were all offsite in Las Vegas. So um, it's still really fun. We we're still a pretty small team at that point. Um, I think we also technically invited our first, which I don't, I don't, know the, I don't see a picture of him, our first official community member. Anyway, um, we have a picture of him somewhere, but it was the first kind of one where we, we started inviting communities. And then we fast forward another year to February 2018. Um, this is MatterCon Lisbon, so this is the first time we held an event in Europe, and, and we did it through Surf Office. Um, I think this was the first event that Hannah was super stressed. Our company had grown to the size where venues and events and planning became extremely difficult. Um, this was the last event I think wasn't all inclusive, which made it really hard. I'm um, on a lot of planning going on. We had community there as well. So if you notice this joker standing right there, Carlos, uh, he was actually at Lisbon. He wasn't uh, a staff member of the company at the time. Uh, he was just community and we invited him and he brought his, uh, his wife and two kids along and uh, we hung out in Lisbon and that's I think when we convinced him to join Matterverse. Um, so that's uh, February. Then we go to our Series A. So the, all the news articles are announced as February 2019. I think we actually closed the round a few months earlier, but that was our Series A. We fast forward again to Punta Cana. Um, so this is MatterCon um, 2019. This was the first event where we invited um, not just community, but we started to invite things like customers and partners. This was our first sort of all-inclusive event, I think made uh, organization a lot easier. And so we fast forward a little bit further, June 2019, we announced our Series B, 50 million from YC. Um, some other fun, interesting things. February 2020, uh, we had um, our own booth at Fostum. Um, I think it was a great way to connect with the community. It was a really large success. The uh, Magic of Mattermost shirts were a super hot commodity there. Um, and it was, just, it was just fun all around uh, community involved. And sort of the last slide, February 2020, um, just continuing sort of MatterCon. Um, this one was in the Bahamas. Uh, and it's really amazing to see sort of, when you look at the, especially the top left, like how big the company has gotten. Um, and so, yep. Uh, last, I wanna say, you know, thank everyone here on this call to helping, you know, seeing us progress and grow through the years. And everyone's been a sort of fundamental sort of key success. 